shade today and bring it into uh, into our remembrance that uh, the forgiveness of the sin is the remission. Um, it is the it is the remission which is um, Jesus mentioned the remission of the sin. And today I like to share some, and I wanted to you know share some of the things that. Um, the Lord put in my heart to bring this uh, good news, you know, to share. And uh, I am Prop. Susanna Krana, and today I have come to share this another brand new message of the Gospel of Jesus Christ. As you know, the Gospel of Jesus Christ is always a hope, and it is a, a cleansing. It is a a need it is a provision provides the needs and today I wanted to share why the forgiveness um, the forgiveness is so important and the forgiveness is uh, is very important because first of all I would like to you know read it from uh, I would read it from First Ephesians, I want to read it and then I want to read it from chapter 2 and verse 14. It said, for he himself is our peace. So, because the covenant of the uh, peace that God has uh, made with us is the covenant of peace. Uh, and that is uh, the covenant of peace that God has uh, uh, made a covenant of peace. That is the one, one thing. And um, for and then I carry on reading from Ephesians chapter two, and it says, uh, "Who has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of separation, having abolished in his flesh the enmity that is the law of commandments contained in ordinances, so as to create in himself one new man from the two, thus making peace." And that he might reconcile them both to God in one body through the cross, thereby putting to death the enmity. And he came and preached peace to you who, who were afar off and to those who were near. For through him we both have access by one spirit to the Father. It is a... Um, it is a, the remission of sin. So it is a, by the blood of Jesus. So that's what he's saying, that because of the blood of Jesus, he's talking about the blood of Jesus. And he said, because of the blood of Jesus, that has brought us near to God. And he is our, our Father. Both have access by one spirit to the Father. Now I would read it from Galatians. And from Galatians, I wanted to share something from the Galatians. In Galatians, I would read it and it says here, I am going to read uh, from, um, uh, from, from verse, verse 10, but I, that is in Galatians chapter 3. And Galatians chapter 3 and I am reading from uh, verse uh, 5. But I would skip verse 5, but I'll read it from 10. It says, For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse, for it is written, Cursed is everyone who does not continue in all things uh, which are written in the book of the law to do them. But I will carry on reading from But that no one is just but that no one is justified by the law in the sight of God, because no one is justified by the law. That's why Jesus has to come, because he has to um fulfill the law and uh, because Jesus doesn't want God doesn't want us to be justified by the law so it is not uh, justified by the law and that's why it says that um, um, uh, in verse 11 but that no one is justified by the law in the sight of God is evident so that's the evident that no one is justified by the law and then it carry on and say for the for the just shall live by faith. So it's not uh, by the law that by the, you know, um, the Ten Commandments. So Jesus has already accomplished Ten Commandments and now it is uh, by faith. So 
I carry on. It says um, uh, it twelve. Yet the law is not of faith. So law is not of faith. So that's why we need to understand that Jesus came and we received the faith, and that's why it say that Jesus already done the work. He's already done the work of the faith. What he done? He um he already accomplished the Ten Commandment is given to us now, and now it is a uh, it is to walk in love. So I carry on and he say in 13, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. And now we need to know that Christ has redeemed us from the law. And that's where we need to see that Christ has redeemed, excuse me. He has redeemed us from the law. And then he carry on and he say, um, the Christ has redeemed uh, Having okay, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who hang on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus. So, here what he's saying, he said that Jesus has already, you know, uh, redeemed us from the curse. So, the Ten Commandments which Jesus accomplished, so he has already done for us. So, he said, We are not. Uh, you know, we are now in the blessings. That's the message I have come to share with you. That the blessing of Abraham, that it has, it belongs to us. So we are in the blessing because the blessings of Abraham has come upon the Gentiles through Jesus Christ. And now we can see that we are, you know, blessed ones. So this is what I'm going to, I'm going to continue reading it. So he said, Cursed is everyone who hang on a tree that the blessing of Abra Abraham might come upon the Gentiles. So what really happened that the forgiveness is uh, now the Lord has done the work. He fulfilled the commandment. So we are not into fulfill the commandment. We are to walk in um, to walk in the love. We are not to do. We are to walk in the Ten command no, not ten commandment. This is the two last commandment Jesus given. Love the Lord with all your heart, with all your uh, mind, with all your soul, and love your neighbor as you love yourself. That's the commandment Jesus given us. The last one. So this is uh, um, it's fulfilling the ten commandments because now the the ten commandments it's now uh, complete in two commandments because remember Moses has broken. So that was uh, finished and then the Lord given him last two, two commandments which the Lord written by him, he written with his own finger. And that is the last commandment, two commandments that uh, Moses came with. And that's the same commandment that Jesus is telling. These are the two commandments. The ten is finished in Christ Jesus because he accomplished, he fulfilled and now he has given us, um, he has given us the uh, two commandments, which is to love the Lord with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, and love your neighbor as you love yourself. And that's why we need to know forgiveness is so important. I continue reading from 14. He said that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Now, God promised Abraham and he say, you know, he promised him. And uh, the promise that God promised Abraham, it was the promise of the blessings. And these blessings, we see it is a... Uh, it says here in 14, and I will read it from uh, verse, okay, I'll read it again, repeat again, that the blessing of Abraham. Now, the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles. So, it is now, we are called, you know, uh, we are called in Abraham. In his blessings that God blessed him because God blessed him and he blessed his descendants. So now we are the descendants of Abraham and the blessings of Abraham that it come upon us. 
So he said, upon Gentiles, but in Christ Jesus. So it is in Christ Jesus, the blessing of Abraham come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus. So in Christ Jesus, we have received the blessing of Abraham. That we might receive the promise. The, the Lord has promised. It's a promise that we are looking at. What promise that God promised? It is the promise of the Holy Spirit. And it said uh, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. And that is the promise that God has given his people and he has given us, which is uh, in Christ Jesus. And that is the blessing of Abraham. And that is the blessing of Abraham, what God promised to Abraham, that it will be fulfilled in his descendants, that we are his descendants and we are uh, in the blessings of Abraham. What God promised Abraham that uh, blessings. Uh, so we're going to see the blessings that God has uh, promised uh, uh, Abraham. Very first thing, we are going to see a verse 12, uh, chapter Genesis chapter 12. And we are going to see here what God has said to him. What God has said to him. So promise to Abraham. Now, he called Abraham and he told him to come out of the country, out of his country, out of uh, his country from his family and from his father's house. So that is uh, verse 1 God is saying. And then now in verse 2, I will make you a great nation. The blessing that God called Abraham, which belongs to us, it is to fulfill in our life because we are the we are the descendant of Abraham and that's why we're receiving the blessing through Jesus Christ. I will bless you and make your name great. So he said, I will bless you and make your name great and you shall be a blessing. So he said, first of all, uh, I will make you a great nation. So make you a great nation. I will bless you. And make your name great. He said, I will do this. I will bless you. I will make you blessings. I will make nation a great nation of you. I will make a great nation. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great and you shall be a blessing. So here God is telling Abraham that I will bless you. And you will be a blessing. So we see here when God is saying, I will bless you. So he's saying, I will bless you and make your name great. Now God promised this to Abraham. It's God promised to Abraham. And God said, I will do it. I will bless you. So that blessing has come upon us the blessing of Abraham and that is through Jesus Christ. Now, the blessing that Jesus, now I will bring bring this, um, uh, taking this uh, message to the next level and seeing this blessing, what is this blessing? Galatians chapter 3 and I will just uh, uh, read it from uh, 14. It said that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. That is the faith that we have received, um, the Spirit of uh, Holy Spirit, and that is the Holy Spirit which we have received in faith, because we have, uh, uh, we have made the Lord Jesus, we have made Jesus our Lord and Savior. So we have uh, received the blessings. And now what does this blessing mean? I just want to uh, read it from Matthew. And I'm going to read it from 26. And 26 he said here, um, I would read it from, um, it's a blessing, financial blessing. It's a spiritual blessing. So that is the institution, institutes 
the Lord's Supper. Jesus institutes the Lord's Supper. It is the Holy Communion. So it said, and they were, okay, I will just read it from here uh, where it says uh, uh, 29. Uh, I would read it from 27. Then he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them saying, drink from it all of you for this is my blood of the new covenant because it's a new covenant now and which is shed for